Hello, everybody, and welcome back to that pretentious book club. Welcome, welcome. Why do you start laughing? I I surprised myself by how quickly I hit the record button. Oh, Usually I, have, I, I take like a half a second before I hit the record button to like mentally prepare myself. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. my brain is just in a lot of places. And so I just went ahead and hit record, but I had not even for a half second prepared myself. So I was like, oh my God, we're recording. And I pressed the button. So like, oh, we're starting. We're starting. We're starting now. Your own fault. <laughs> Literally my own fault. I like to be my own worst enemy. It's like my favorite hobby. Incredible. Yeah. Anyways, that over there is Dr. <sighs> Swins Palermo, aka Kendall Shaw. Hi, howdy. And over there. What? That's I think there's a bit phrase. of a lag. I know. I think there's a bit of a lag. So for oh. me, I was just like, I introduced you, and then there was a really long pause. And then <laughs> your intro. What if I just refuse to say anything? <laughs> you introduced would be me like, and I was like, hmm. and uh, she usually says hello and howdy right about here. And what if I just do the whole episode where I just, and I say something and then I answer what I think you might've said. <laughs> would be a really interesting experiment, honestly. Really, really <laughs> I feel like would. you would, I think you would do a really good job, honestly, being able to decide what I would say. I hope so. We, I feel like we each other I, pretty well. We do. We, we do. You definitely like know me as well, but I feel like you're always like keep up with like what's trendy and stuff more than I do. Like <laughs> language wise, like, you know, more of like what the words the kids are using. Uh, well, I learn new uh, ones yeah. from you every episode. So the I, kids I would, these days. Yeah, I'd be a little confused, but uh, yeah. Well, well, let me, let me go ahead and do my thing. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> the non-trendy one over there is mm-hmm. uh, Ash O'Rourke. <laughs> you can call her wheezy it ain't easy being wheezy especially because i just realized i forgot my <laughs> notepad what <laughs> happened over here it was like a five second pause i was like oh, okay so we're really doing it oh this is funny <laughs> the internet is something with us today oh, man. oh that's funny i i forgot my notebook that i usually take my time code notes in, so i'm just gonna oh. take them on my phone i guess today i oh. hope it doesn't Ooh. die because it's on 11 well, percent. we can pause and i can no. take the notes if you want my oh, phone I is mean, on. It, actually, it, actually, it'll have 80%. to be on mine. It's okay. Mine has to be anyways, because I have like the, I basically use my audio file and the time codes in my audio file or how I live. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Cause it's a little bit different. Um, I found a burr. If you guys are not from the South, you might not know what that is, but it's a little spiky thing. I'm showing it in the camera. Um, and I hate find those them guys in my carpet and they hurt. And I Where, on them. like, what even are they? I feel like they just exist they just know what they are no evil pure evil i don't know anything yeah um i I sometimes think about how like little i know about how things work like Mm -hmm. i just accept that my tv works i kind of i know i could look things up and be like oh how fascinating and instead i'm like oh my god it's magic like i just refuse to learn i I guess i'm ignorant on purpose I, I am about a lot of things too, but it is funny, like the extent to which a lot of us don't know how stuff works. Like I saw this thing that said, um, it was so funny. You might've seen it going around. It was like the picture of a side of like a milk carton, some like little like dairy farm or whatever from like a little dairy farm. And it had like mm-hmm. the names of the cows that the milk came from, like all their milk cows on the side. Oh yeah. Really cute. And somebody commented and was like, oh my God, notice how all of the dairy cows have girl names. Like this is misogyny <laughs> runs deep. And somebody was like, <laughs> that's where the milk comes from actually so what really someone said was that they wouldn't want to drink milk milk that comes from a bull which was disgusting (laughs) oh my god people I'm begging people to just think for five seconds before they say stuff you know we all have our moments we all have our blonde moments we do sometimes you know that one was a little I was like wow wow (laughs) right right people are dumb Right. That's uh, right. Yeah. We're all well, a little bit disconnected from the way that our worlds work. It's a little oh, scary, sure. but at the same time, you can't know how everything works. No, like, you know, got to leave some up for, you know, so you can continue to believe in magic actually oh, no, sure. just because you, just because you can't know everything. And that's why people specialize in different stuff. Yeah. Like just go talk to an expert, you know? Yeah, exactly. Or Google is your best friend. Google is um, so your best friend and YouTube. If you guys want to skip our nonsense, do the mm. skip notes. We can say that. But for yeah, all you I skippers, you, hold you, guys hostage. you make it convenient and easy. 
Yes. <laughs> I was going to just hold y'all it's hostage. Quick, it's easy but... and it's free. Quick, it's easy, it's free. <laughs> Use the skip notes. It'll save your sanity. Or will it? <laughs> Anyways, how has uh, how's, how's your, your week been? Oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. No, that you was go no, first. after you. No, you go first. <laughs> you hang up first. Oh my god, no, you hang up first. Oh, so um, cute. We're adorable. Um, yeah, <laughs> we are. Well, my week has been good, pretty much. Oh, I forgot. I have. I guess I haven't. I've texted you, but I should just mm-hmm. let everyone know. I'm in my Elvis Presley era right now. I am full on an Elvis girly at the moment. She is. Yeah. I saw the Baz Luhrmann Elvis movie mm-hmm. one week ago today it feels like a lifetime though so honestly. your world has changed in a week it really has my whole world view has shifted oh my <laughs> god Elvis focused you um, missed my elvis phase am i like i would think i was when i was went like through an elvis phase oh when i was like 14 or 15 i went through an elvis phase and oh, nobody yeah. just, nobody appreciated it with me <laughs> i was just all alone oh, that's so sad yeah you're just like feeling this- thrilled when you were like, Intense. I'm going through an Elvis thing. Yeah, you te- you did seem excited over your text. So I was I like, was. oh, thank goodness. I was like, um, amazing. I didn't know this was something other people experienced. I'm so pleased. <laughs> <laughs> I truly feel like I'm connected soul wise to the 1957 girlies, you know, like yeah. we are the same. Like I uh-huh. understand them completely. Oh, yeah. It's just there's something about him. I don't know uh-huh. what it is. <laughs> Apparently uh, my Mimi had like a huge appeal. crush. It is the sex appeal. My Mimi oh. had a huge crush on Elvis and her parents did not approve because oh, of course not. Elvis and he would dance with his hips, man. Oh my God. Elvis, Elvis the pelvis. pelvis. What a yeah. whore. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah. So I loved the movie and then I have been listening to Elvis all week. Uh, and my favorite Elvis song currently is called you're so square and then in parentheses baby I don't care have you ever uh, heard it <laughs> no I haven't but that's, I mean the title it's, alone is excellent the title just tells you exactly what the song is about and it yeah. cracks me up because I'm like oh my god he's talking to me I am so <laughs> square but he doesn't even he wouldn't even care he wouldn't even like, care El- Elvis would love me anyway he doesn't even care he would yeah. um <laughs> I wonder I if also- Billy the kid is jealous right now the thing is both of these guys can just get bitches, you know, and <laughs> I am, I am entitled if they're going to sleep around, I can oh too, God. you know, with my fictional <laughs> being in love. Well, I guess Elvis is not fictional, but <laughs> oh my God. you're like, this is a consensual polyamorous situation. <laughs> it really is like Billy's just going to have to be okay with it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I bet he's not. I mean, he'll always be my number one, but you know, right now I'm an Elvis. <laughs> but Elvis girlie. is your side thing. So, oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's, that been your whole week. That's, that's pretty much all I have to report this week. Um, oh, yeah, I think that's it for me, you know, wait, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if I have anything interesting this week, Javi got back and then he Yay! left again. So <laughs> Yeah, well, he got back. He was here for about two days, and then he had to go take care of some stuff with his unit. And so now he gets back again tomorrow. So luckily, not hmm. gone as long this time. But um, I can't wait for him to come home. He was only here for two days. Uh, so I'm excited for him to get back. And then um, I'm trying to think of anything else, any updates with the farm animals. Winnie got his last shot. So that's good. Yay, Winnie. Yeah. A healthy he, boy. A healthy boy who threw up in my car three times on the way to the vet. <laughs> And then once on the way back. Yeah. Oh God, Winnie. Yeah. He, we got about, and Hoppy was so nice. He was driving like 20 miles an hour on the way out of the neighborhood because it's kind of curvy and we know the dog gets car sick, but we were about three and a half minutes into the trip when Winnie threw up the first time. And I was like, Oof. we've been in the car for three and a half minutes. And then on the way back, we stopped at a dollar <laughs> store so Hoppy could go grab a drink. And so we're sitting there parked in the parking lot. And all of a sudden I hear, and I look in the back and when he's he's dry heaving because he's already thrown up so much but I'm like Uh-oh. we are parked Winchester we're parked <laughs> this should not be affecting you oh, yeah baby. I, I think it's anxiety he really does not like getting in the car at all 
So Javi had to no. like pick him up and put him in the car and pick him up. And he, we walked into the vet and he peed on the ground, the dog, not Javi. Oh, <laughs> okay. <Thank God. laughs> yeah. I was worried there for a sec. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, but luckily we don't have to do that again for a while because that dog should be tranquilized, honestly, for car rides. He just doesn't yeah. calm down at all. He won't calm down. He refuses steadfastly. Oh, poor yeah. guy. Well, then, I, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, you go No, ahead. I was just saying, oh, no, you, no. <laughs> no, you. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, Juicy's the exact same way. I'm like accepting now that I cannot take her in car rides last more than five minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, she is just going to have to have a sleeping pill or something if I ever yeah. decide to move yeah like anytime like he yep. will not he cannot handle it so I get yeah. you this is what Javi and I said Javi and I, we're gonna have to tranquilize him and put him in like in a trailer like he's not riding in the car yeah it's gonna be him vomiting the whole trip like we poor can't guy yeah it's rough and then um we moved all the baby chicks from their brooder in the garage to a big brooder out in the coop so now they're <gasps> out there with the big chickens but yeah. The big chickens can't Yippee. peck them to death because they're protected in a brooder. So that's oh nice. good. We're gonna merge the flocks soon. Uh, they mm-hmm. just needed the little ones to get a little bit bigger, and then we'll merge mm-hmm. the flocks, and they'll all be free ranging. And then the Bennett sisters, the Keats, the little guinea babies <gasps> that we got, they're all in the garage in their brooder, and they are still alive. Wild. Yeah, they're all still alive. I Yay! think knock on wood, I think they're gonna make it. But they are so funny because they're like wilder now than the day that we got them. Like they do not like <laughs> to be touched. They do not like to be looked at. They do not like you to clean out their thing or even give them more food. They act like wild birds who have been caught <laughs> and like really ah! freak out wild birds. They're not oh, even no. like remotely calm wild birds. They are, it's so funny. Ugh. Those Bennett sisters, there's no tame in them, you know. Not at all. They're just out, they're 100 percent panicked all of the time. Oh god. Poor yeah. And they're, guys. they're so loud too. Cause guineas, their whole thing is that they're loud. But I picked one up yesterday and I was on the phone with Hobby and Hobby. He was like, is that what is that sound? And I'm like, that is a guinea. It is so loud right now because I picked <laughs> it up. Cause they are they're like probably 10 times louder or more than the chicks. Like they are oh, yeah. unbelievable. I could it's already fantastic. tell that, you know, they're mm-hmm. super loud. Yeah. They're yeah, going to be great little watch birds. They are. And apparently they're French guineas. That's the breed. Oh, the other ones ooh la la. Got. Ooh la la, French guineas. So that's pretty much my updates, which is just farm stuff. Oh, and the bees have found us all of a sudden the last two days. There have been so many. There have been honeybees and bumblebees in my garden Yay. the last two mornings. Like so, they've doubled every great. day. I don't know where they're coming from, but they really that's like my amazing. squash blossoms. So. I bet you if I, I could get you some beeswax and I bet if you put it out there in your garden, all the bees would come because they so. flock to it. I mean, it is crazy. I love that. Yeah. We're going to get bees because we want to keep bees, but, and I think I was going to put the tank out there, but I think I'm going to, instead under those trees near the garden, I'm going to put the bees, but I don't know when we're going nice, to do that nice. yet. Yeah. So. I don't know. I don't know, but that's pretty much my update for this week. It's just like kind of boring farm chores. A very cottage core, very cute. Very cottage core. Although I don't ever, as we've covered, I don't ever look cottage core. I look sweaty. Right, gross. right. <laughs> I look very disgusting. Realism. We're going I for said, realism, you know. We're going for realism. Yeah, I sent you that video, right, of my arm after the hay, after I moved the yes. hay. Yes. Disgusting. That looked crazy. It was gross. Yeah, I'll share that for dirty. you guys, maybe. It was, I took off my glove <laughs> and it looked like I was wearing like a dark sleeve all the way to my wrist. And yeah. then it was just my white, white hand. Where the glove had covered. You guys want to see a dirty, dirty arm? <laughs> follow so us on Insta. Yeah, follow us on Insta. I actually, and I posted it on my personal TikTok. And um, one of my friends, he commented and he said, I felt like we were becoming close friends, but after this, I don't think I can anymore. <laughs> and I thought it was really funny. I was like, dude, <laughs> I was like, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, boy. that's funny. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. It's really great. Yeah. Anyways, uh, should we get into our yes. book for this episode? Yes, yes. Okay, this week we're doing Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, was this a book rack or was this just something? That uh, we- it was a book rack from me. I put ah, it on there. Ah. So, this was all me. <laughs> just, Most of I this did. season, I feel like, has been you. 
I really went ham this season. I was like, I have access to this reading list. I can do it. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> our reading all of my old favorite books. Yeah, exactly. I think I just pretty much picked like uh, books for our holiday episodes. And then between Kendall and, and y'all, y'all listeners, y'all filled up the rest y'all of Y'all listeners. Yeah, we, <laughs> you and me guys, we really did it. <laughs> mm-hmm. You really, really did. Um, <laughs> so do you want to tell us about Cornelia Funk? I do. I do. I do. Okay. Well, first I should preface by saying how I found this book. Okay, so I was in like fifth grade. No, I was in fourth grade. And uh, there's a magical thing called the Scholastic Book Fair. (laughs) If you weren't aware, all of our listeners are like, yes, we worship it. (laughs) It is the great gathering. Seriously, it's like where we (laughs) we all have our origin stories at the Scholastic Book Fair. Uh, But like maybe, I don't know, international people, if you're listening, um, the Mm -hmm. Scholastic Book Fair is basically like, classic but you know book publisher people <laughs> they bring imagine all, like, imagine you've been in class all day long right yeah doing all kinds of gross math and science and things that none of us care about at all and then they say we're gonna let you off an hour early today and your parents are coming to school or you're gonna come back in the evening was another way that they would do it and you're gonna come back with they your would parents do that and friends yeah and basically you would go into like your school's library or something but it no longer looks like the library you know no instead it's there a are place. shelves and displays of cool like little like toys and like bookish nerd stuff and some of it's kind of like school book stuff but a lot of it is just mm-hmm. like really fun like middle grade and YA fiction stuff and all kinds of book yes. snacks and you get to go in there and you get to buy stuff and it's awesome you it is amazing your parents like if you remember to tell them and they were <laughs> able to would give you like $15 uh-huh. and you would bring it to school and spend it at the scholastic book fair yep. and you could get there had posters they had books uh-huh. they had fun erasers erasers, and- erasers. yes <laughs> they had cool everything erasers. it was yeah. the best thing in the whole world so it anyway wonderful. I'm in fourth grade I'm at the scholastic book fair and what do I see oh what is that it's a really cool looking book it's called ink spell it's purpley Ooh. blue it has an uh-huh. awesome cover it has fairies on it, like mm-hmm. cool little it. magic creatures on it. I pick it up. I'm like, I want this one because I love the cover. It yeah. is huge. You're thinking, I'm thinking, can I actually read this? The only things I've really read so far in my life have been Babysitter's Club books. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> but God. I bet I can do it. Oh, and uh-huh. like, you know, because of Win Dixie and that kind of stuff. Oh God. So, I buy it with my, you know, $10 that I have at the Scholastic mm-hmm. Book Fair. I take it home. I devour it. Uh-huh. And then after I'm done with it, I realize it's the second in a series. And I, I used to do that the all the one. time. Yeah. Yes. So then I went and read Inkheart, which is the one we're reading today. Uh-huh. So basically our girl Cornelia wrote this series and Cornelia was born on December 10th, 1958 which makes her a, I don't know, Sagittarius. So uh, I should have she, known. <laughs> she's a we just covered this. But C.S. Lewis was a Sag, right? They're all Sagges. Everyone's know. a Sag. So. There are. You guys, there is a disproportionate amount of Sagittarius authors. Like there's so many. Yeah, what's wrong with y'all? Yeah, why there's so many? Oh, y'all? y'all are crazy. So she is a German author. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is from West Westphalia, Westphalia. Sorry, I have been in German for German. many years, but I do not. Um, I'm not good at it. So anyway, <laughs> she uh, was the oldest of four siblings. Um, mm-hmm. She uh, grew up kind of like it seems kind of like a rural area. Uh-huh. Um, and she. Uh, grew up and became a social worker so she was like working with kids all the time and stuff Mm -hmm. and you know read them stories that kind of thing and she also then after being a social worker she started working as a book illustrator Mm -hmm. and then she started writing books in the late 80s so she's been writing for a long time and she writes like fantasy children's books basically like all of her Uh stuff is fantasy children's books um 
and she's actually like extremely famous in Germany apparently she's like she's like their big deal um children's author which like good for her yeah and so actually probably a lot of people have either read something that she's written or like at least heard of it because she wrote the ink heart series and then she also like I'm just thinking of ones that we all kind of knew and she also wrote the thief lord Uh so a lot of people read the thief lord when I was younger yeah um which I also really like um so she wrote ink heart in 2003 um and it so it was actually written in German and then they were reading the translation so which is interesting um and she has sold over 20 million copies of her books worldwide isn't that cool she also has a series successful she really is yeah she's also written the dragon rider series and Uh um, some other things so yeah she is uh very popular and very good at writing and she was chosen by time as one of the 100 most influential people in the world for their 2005 list and i got that from wikipedia but yeah isn't that cool that is so cool yeah um and she seems super nice i really want to like write her a letter (laughs) you should uh yeah i really really want to (laughs) but i feel like she's too famous she'd be like who cares Oh, that's oh what yeah, I and done. she has um, two kids. Aww. So, yeah. Cool. Sweet. And, oh, as of now, she lives in Italy, which ah. is where a lot of this book is set. Yeah, it is. I always forget about that. I've seen the movie multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. It's set in Italy. What a th- I'm always like, oh, Italy. And then I'm like, oh, Italy. And then I'm like, Italy? Like, I have, I have such mixed feelings about Italy. I know my my first thought when you said she lives in Italy now was like oh I'm sorry for her and then I was like no Ash that's not correct people like (laughs) Italy Italy is quite lovely (laughs) oh god okay she's not living with your Italian family (laughs) exactly exactly I gotta remember that not all of Italy is like that actually Italy (laughs) is beautiful I would love the adventure that they go on here is excellent it's also like the best of Italy even though lots of like insanity is going on yeah it Um, sounds really pretty yeah well should we do uh should we do the summary yes 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 okay i'll try not to interrupt too much no you're welcome to interrupt this is a very very long book that she's long so i'm gonna do my best but we might be getting the sparks notes version via we don't have to say like every single thing that happens you know it's well i finished reading it a couple days ago so that's why i'm just saying there's a good chance i'm only gonna remember the highlights but um, because my memory is that it's that fast. If I finished it a couple of days ago, I'm already <laughs> losing stuff, but I really enjoyed it. So we start out and we've got um, these characters, Maggie and her father, Mortimer, who goes by Mo. And Maggie is the daughter. She's like 12, I think. She's 12. Um, yeah. Yeah. She's 12. And she calls her dad Mo. And she always has called him Mo. And everyone pretty much calls him Mo. And um basically all she knows about her mom is that her mom went away when she was three years old. So Mm -hmm. that's, she doesn't, that's about all she knows about the mom. Um, it's all kind of mysterious. They basically travel around Europe and, um, Mo is a, he like, he's a book binder. So he like people who have got these like beautiful old antique books that need new bindings, he rebinds them, which is very cool. And he and Maggie are both like the ultimate book nerds. They read all the time, but, um, he does not read out loud ever uh Woo-hoo. so they're staying in this like really pretty like farmhouse in italy it is in italy right i think they're in germany oh, actually they're in germany and then, and then because they germany. do say but i don't think they ever actually say it but they do say at one point because i was trying to figure it out but yeah. at one point they say like oh she lives in italy and she lives south so i'm like okay cornelia's from germany they're saying she lives in italy so that means she, they're probably not in italy so I'm just assuming they're in Germany, but yeah, who knows? I would assume so. My microphone is being crazy. Um, so anyway, there's somewhere in Europe. Europe is all much closer together than here. So it's not a big <laughs> drive from Germany. Yeah, they're Italy. fine. <laughs> yeah, they're, it's not a big road trip. Um, anyways, so they live in this farmhouse and it's just full of books and they read books all the time. And one night it's like raining. She looks outside and she sees somebody standing on the lawn and she's like, this is kind of creepy. He's just like looking at the house and she's like, um, uh, Mo. And so (laughs) so she goes and she tells Mo and Mo's like, you're probably imagining things. 
Um, but guess what? He's not imagining. She's not imagining things. Uh, so this guy comes into the house and he is, he's so funny. He's got a little Martin with him, which is kind of like a little weasel thing. And it has horns, but he says that he glued them on because he's a street performer who like juggles fire and stuff. Um, and it's very cool. And I am so obsessed with him. I'm just going to say it right off the bat. I'm not I am surprised. obsessed with him. He was he like has, my first yeah. obsession. <laughs> yeah, he has the energy of someone who would be your obsession. You're attracted to a very specific energy and Dustfinger has it. His name is Dustfinger. His name is Dustfinger. <laughs> it's ah, good. He's kind of the worst though. Like it's, yeah, I, anyway, we'll bit. talk about it, but. He's a little bit the worst, but you also, you feel for him so much, but he's a little bit the worst. Mm-hmm. Um. So anyways, they... Uh, they reconnect basically Mo and Dustfinger know each other. Clearly they clearly have a history. They're not exactly pleased with each other. And Dustfinger is kind of seems like he might be hiding something. Um, he's basically, he comes looking for the book, right? Is it not why he comes to see him? Yeah. He's like looking for this one book that I think, or no, he goes, he's telling Mo like, Capricorn's men are looking for you. Oh, that's, that's what, what it, it is. is. Yeah. So he comes to warn him. He so Dustinger has come to warn Mo that Capricorn, this big mysterious baddie, is coming to uh to get him, he's coming to get Mo and the book. And so Mo is like, Well, at first he's like, I don't, I'm not really worried about it. Like it's it's on my radar, but we've gotten pretty good at avoiding him. But Dustinger basically convinces them that they need to go somewhere safer. And so they go see Eleanor, which is the aunt of Mo's wife, the mysterious wife who's disappeared. Her aunt is Eleanor. And mm-hmm. Eleanor lives in Italy um, in a pretty affluent area, I believe. And she has this insanely beautiful mansion and it is like full, like full, full, full of books. But whereas like, so was Mo and Maggie's like farmhouse, but they were all kind of stacked haphazardly everywhere. Eleanor's book collection is precise and beautiful and it is all like on everything is on a shelf everything has its place and she spends so much money collecting really really nice (laughs) yeah she is loaded she's loaded she's straight loaded and she doesn't really like children she doesn't really like most people she pretty much just likes books even Mo she doesn't even seem to enjoy that much like she she approves of him as a person basically which is as really as close as you get to liking him so yeah. they're there and um he, Mo asks if she, if she can hide a book for him a book that he's that he has bound himself and brought with them uh spoiler it's the book Inkheart Inkheart's the name of a book and uh not this book but a book inside the book it's Whoa. bookception, <laughs> bookception. <laughs> but he has Eleanor hide it basically for them and then they're gonna stay on and he's gonna bind some of rebind some of Eleanor's old antique books and Dustfinger came with them and so one night Dustfinger uh, wants to show Maggie some of his fire tricks. So they go out on the lawn and he shows her fire tricks. But then all of a sudden she gets this, uh, Maggie gets this really bad feeling and she goes back inside. And basically what happens is her father, Mo is kidnapped and he's forced to like take the book with him. Well, they say it's the book. And then, um, so left behind, these are Capricorn's men who come and take him away. And uh, so Dustfinger, Eleanor, and Maggie now are all left behind with the real copy of Inkheart. And Mo has been kidnapped by Capricorn's men and he's being taken to Capricorn's secret base in Italy in this old kind of abandoned village, which is a very, very cool setting. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we love it. And then, um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't love that he's been kidnapped, but we do love the setting. That oh, no. I, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, same page, same page. For um, sure. So, they basically Maggie's like we have to go after him we have to save him and Eleanor's like what if we why shouldn't we just call the police the whole time Eleanor's like I just want to call the police like she's just being very reasonable (laughs) yeah and it's like this is not the place for that this is a a middle grade fantasy Eleanor don't you understand the police can never help you in in a middle grade fantasy no way come on get with the program yeah so uh so they all kind of set off and I'm trying to remember that they get there the first time um they don't, do they get kidnapped and taken there the first time? How do they actually get they, into the, the first time? They just, Dustfinger knows where the village is. So they yeah. just like drive there. Yeah. They and just then when, drive in. when they get there, Basta is like, takes them to Capricorn. Yes. So Basta is one of Capricorn's henchmen. He's like the big bad 
you know, henchman character. Like the big three characters that we kind of get a feel for from the story of Inkheart are Capricorn, the ultimate villain, Basta, his very evil henchman, but who's very superstitious and so very like afraid of like superstitious things. And then Dustfinger, who's kind of kind of a, the protagonist. He's a thief. Um, but he's basically he's like just like a trickster guy. Yeah, he's like, like a trickster I, guy. Yeah. I want to read Inkheart the book. Yeah. not this book, but the book in the book yeah. so bad. Like it's I want to intense. know what is going on. Yeah. Same. Because I'm also like, I want to know like how I'm always curious, like confused as to how much Dustfinger is the main character or not. Or like, if yeah. he is, I feel like yeah. he's not the main character. He's just like in it. Like yeah. it feels weird to me, but anyway, yeah. I want to read it super bad, but I yeah, know. I don't think we actually said that, but you do find out that they are from the book. They are from the so. book. Uh, basically what happened is that Maggie's father one day when she was three years old and he and, and her mom were reading together, Teresa is her mom's name and, uh, Mo and Teresa were reading Inkheart, this book that they'd gotten secondhand. Cause they used to collect secondhand books and read them together. And as Mo was reading out loud, like these men, Basta, Capricorn and Dustfinger all appeared like in the middle of a sword fight in their living room. And the two cats disappeared that were sitting on Teresa's lap along with Teresa. So basically the idea is Mo can read things out of the book, but for everything he reads out of a book, something from our world gets taken into the book. They swap places. And so ever since then, um, Maggie's mother has been trapped inside the book in cart. And these big baddies have been just wandering around the European countryside causing mayhem. Cornelia is so good. Like, I know she's a genius she's She's a a genius genius. she's she's a genius she is I'm obsessed Um, it's really good so anyways they go to try and rescue Mo from Capricorn's lair or whatever uh Basta catches them uh he brings them up to see Capricorn Capricorn has basically tracked down every copy of Inkheart the book and he's burned all of them except for one because he needs he needs Mo to read someone out of ink heart for him and that's his whole that's why he's been trying to kidnap mo and trying to get rid of every other copy of ink heart um so that's unfortunate they get like locked up in a dungeon i'm trying yeah to and they find out that dustfinger betrayed them he's like been yes. working with capricorn yeah so he did it on right. purpose yeah dustfinger intentionally led capricorn's men like told capricorn's men where Maggie and her father were staying. So that mm-hmm. was fully intentional. So they're pretty upset with Dustfinger. So Dustfinger goes off and kind of does his thing. He's always like, poor Dustfinger. Like he always really feels like a victim, but at the same time, like he also <laughs> causes a lot of the problems. Yeah. You're like, dude. yeah. He's obsessed with, he He's wants like- to be read back into the book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, and he thinks that that's like his main it. thing. Yeah. But right. Noah's like, I don't know how to read things. I don't even know how to read specific things out of books. Like I definitely don't know how to read you back into the book, but he Dustfinger does not seem to grasp this concept that Mo cannot read him back into the book. He's like, if you just tried hard enough. And so, uh, <laughs> Capricorn so he keeps bothering him for like yeah. 10 years. <laughs> exactly. Um, so Capricorn makes Mo read out of a couple books, um, just to like get a bunch of gold out of these stories to kind of like, and also kind of like to test his skills or whatever. And so he reads out a bunch of gold from, what is it? Treasure Island. Treasure Island. Which we will be reading later in the season. Yes, we will be. Um, so he reads out some gold and then he accidentally reads out, um, Fareed, who is this like 15 year old. 15 yeah. 16 year old guy from the a thousand it's a thousand and one nights right that collection uh-huh. of of middle they're like middle eastern short stories yeah they're very very old stories i think it's the tale of like so the, the i think story it's alibaba and the 40 thieves yeah is what it is so, yeah exactly um so that's farid comes from that set of stories and he gets locked up with them too so now we've got this other poor guy who's been read out of a book and Dustfinger's like, I know the feels, man. And Farid is like, I'll follow you anywhere you go, Dustfinger. For some reason, he just attaches himself to Dustfinger. Yeah, Dustfinger's like, stop he it. really does. He's like, could you teach me how to juggle <laughs> yeah. fire? And Dustfinger's like, no, but okay. But <laughs> they have like a very grudging little relationship. They do. Yeah. So and funny. Yeah. Farid, however, is not really that interested in being read back into his story. He's kind of like, it's not that bad here. And I'm like, wow, your life was yeah. really hard if you think that, because they're basically immediately imprisoned and then running from villains. And he's <laughs> like, this isn't that bad. 
yeah true he's like like, i've had it worse they're like really (laughs) yeah apparently Um, it kind of kills me because there's like one part where he says this is later in the book but it's kind of relevant to what we're talking about but he's like he has like a plan for something and mo is like oh wow that's really smart of you like that's a great plan or whatever and Farid's like oh my god like what people appreciating me (laughs) he can't believe it yeah it's so cute if we like her cutest he's a a sweet precious baby and we love him so much he's so sweet Um, well they end up uh escaping dust finger helps them escape because capricorn basically says dust finger you suck i was never gonna have you read back into your book and so he's like well screw this then i'm gonna let your prisoners go and so he he lets them out and they basically escape to this other to this little italian town it's actually only a couple hours away or something like it's not that far away and um while they're there eleanor like gets them like fresh clothes and they stay in a hotel and she's gonna go back home to check on her books um but she's basically before she leaves she's tracked down um this the author of the story Inkheart named Fenolio he's this old guy named Fenolio and he lives in this town and so they decide that they're going to go see him because the problem is that copy Capricorn still has that one copy of of Inkheart and so they need to see if there's any other copies maybe because then Mo is I think Mo still wishes in his heart that he could read Teresa back out like he doesn't want to give up the book right and so they're going to go check with the author and see if maybe he has another copy. So they go see the guy. Fenolio is very funny. He He's like watching his grandchildren and this adorable. <laughs> he's such a good grandfather. Um, they're, the, and the kids are crazy, but he's basically like, I can't help you. I All of my copies of the book were stolen. So he doesn't have any copies left, but they basically kind of explain to him Well, see, the thing is, like, I accidentally read some of your characters out of the book. And he's like, what what does that mean? And so they they tell him the whole thing. And he's like, I want to meet Dustfinger. I want to meet my characters in real life. And they're like, I don't think that's such a good idea. Like, Dustfinger was like, I don't want to meet that guy. Yeah. And he does not want to know how his story ends. Another spoiler, in in the book Inkheart, Dustfinger is killed by Basta. And so Mo knows that. So Mo won't tell Dustfinger. And it's another part of why he doesn't really, even if he could read him back, doesn't really want to read him back into the story because he's going to get killed at the end of the story. So right. So that's sad. But um, basically, Eleanor um, has gotten home and found that almost like all of her valuable old books have been burned. So that's yeah, horrifying. that sucks. It does suck. So she decides to come back and she's going to help them. And so she's going to fly in and Mo goes to pick her up at the airport. So while, but while he's gone, Basta and Flatnose, is that his name? Basta's kind of sidekick. Right. There's like a hierarchy of sidekicks. Yeah. Here. There's like Cockerel and also Flatnose, uh, yeah, but I don't remember. Other... They're interchangeable to me. Yeah, they are. They're, they're just other henchmen. And so they come and uh, they kidnap Maggie and Fenolio and leave them a message that says basta because none of these by the way none of these guys can read and write that's part of the thing too is like none of them can read or write so Mm -hmm. uh, but apparently he can write his name basta and so that when uh which by the way fun fact basta in italian means stop i i don't think that was an intentional choice really yeah i don't i always was was like it's such a weird name like it sounds like pasta yeah but it is like a little bit intimidating i don't know why Basta, fa silencio. That means stop, Basta. make silence. Oh, literally, which it just means shut up. It means shut up, stop, shut up, which I heard from my grandmother a lot. <laughs> oh, God. That's how I know it. <laughs> You're like, um, it's very familiar to me. <laughs> very familiar to me. But um, yeah, anyway, so they're kidnapped. They go back. Uh, Eleanor and Mo are now going to have to look for them. They're just using Maggie and Vanolio as bait, honestly. Um, but Fenolio lies and tells Basta that they can't kill him because he's the author of their story. So if they kill him, then these characters will cease to exist. So they're like, dang it, we can't kill the old guy. So now they're all back at Capricorn's fortress and he and Maggie are locked up and Maggie finds this stash of books from Capricorn's old reader. So before they kidnapped Mo to try and get him to be the re- reader, they had found someone else who kind of had Mo's gift, but wasn't like very good at it. So he right. would like read, try, he would read stuff out of the books, but only like everything would be a little bit wrong with whatever he read out of the book. Like he read out, for instance, one, a woman from one of the books, like he had Capricorn had him read out all of his old, like maid servants and stuff and henchmen. Mm-hmm. And so he had him read out one of the women that he read out. Her name is Reese and she was read out of the book but she had she had no voice she was read out without a voice Mm -hmm. so 
anyway, so I'll just drop that little fact. We'll need that there. for later, dear we'll listener. Need- <laughs> yeah, we're going to use this later. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a special tool for later. Whatever, <laughs> whatever that awful meme is. <laughs> oh, God. That's anyway. exactly what it is. <laughs> um. Anyway, so Maggie finds the stash of books from Darius, the old reader guy, and one of them is the story of Peter Pan. And so she's reading it like out loud to herself and she starts to read about Tinkerbell and then who appears in the room, but Tinkerbell the fairy. Tinkerbell! Yeah. So she tries to hide the fact that she's accidentally read a fairy out of the book because she didn't know that she could read stuff out of stories like Mo can, but now mm-hmm. she knows. So she doesn't want them to find out. But of course, Basta comes in and he sees the fairy and he kind of puts two and two together because he's not a total idiot. He's just mostly an idiot. And yeah. so he <laughs> takes her to Capricorn and he's like, guess what? I have great news. Um, that basically Maggie can do what Mo can do. So Capricorn's like, great. Now we don't even need Mo. Yeah. Um, and Maggie and Fenolio have been captured for a little while now. And Maggie's like, why isn't my dad coming to get me? So um, they oh, kind of try yeah. and like, trick her. They kind of try and tell her like, your dad's not coming for you. He doesn't want you, which Maggie believes a little bit more than I thought she would consider. I'm like, you have no evidence to support that. Um, yeah, but she's been through a lot. And I feel lot, like yeah. this book is just a progression of Maggie, like being a little bit more and more hardened to the world. Yes, <laughs> like it is. eventually she's just kind of like, hmm, I don't care. You should murder him. Like, and she just yeah. doesn't give a have any more literally like, does yeah she's she like literally the world does. is actually a bad place I've realized so yeah yeah <laughs> she does it's kind she of a crazy for lesson for a children's book honestly it's a pretty dark children's book I, mean, really, I really liked it but it is oh I love it but like, like I said pull punches they don't and aren't there some very interesting like kind of adult themes in it like that and then also there's like infidelity <laughs> like yes it yes. is crazy it is crazy it is like a child is thrown into a adult fantasy world it's like an adult yeah. epic fantasy like yes. that's but a child is in it yeah so it's yes. a child's perspective yeah because I was thinking about like I was like why is I wonder why and then I was like oh it's because all of the main characters except for Mo- Maggie and Fareed who are adults all of them are like over 30 at least you know yeah yeah it's very interesting I've never read another children's book where most of the main characters are adults adults. yeah yeah but it's so good and now I want to watch the movie again because I really really enjoy that movie I know I kind of do too at first I hated it because it's pretty different but Mm -hmm. now that I've like gotten older I've come to appreciate it it also has sorry what I was saying it's one of those things where like if you read the book or sorry, if you watch the movie before you read the book, you can enjoy it for what it is. And then, and you don't even know yet how often like, <laughs> I, en- this is going to sound awful. I enjoyed the movie Aragon because I hadn't <laughs> read the book. Yeah. No, it is a complete bastardization of the book and a horrible representation of the book, but on its own as a separate thing, I quite enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, I was like, like, is it amazing? <laughs> no, but it was enjoyable. And now it's just horrifying. But, right, um, right. But yeah. this one, I think you can still enjoy it. Like I'm a huge book fan of the book and I still kind mm-hmm. of enjoy watching it. Yeah. But I think that's also because the Doesn't cast is my so good. It. Like, I don't know it has Brendan Fraser plays Mo. I love Brendan Fraser. I just love Brendan Fraser too. Oh yeah. I yeah, cannot believe so like the house. cast they got. Yeah. Because yeah, Brendan. Well, apparently Cornelia Funke loves Brendan Fraser. Like he read the audiobook and he, he like dedicated the third book to him. Like That's it's crazy. hysterical. Uh, Cornelia Funke, like a woman after all of our own hearts. <laughs> Seriously. She's like, got the mummy on repeat at her house. Yes. Um, in so Italy. do we. But Javi and I both have a crush oh, yeah. on, on Brendan Fraser and the mummy. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you're living, breathing humans. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> but like also Paul Bettany plays Dustfinger, which is insane. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah uh Helen Mirren is in it um, it. (laughs) which is crazy and uh Jim Broadbent is in it like how do they get this cat Andy Serkis plays Capricorn that is crazy like I don't know how they did that it's a good movie I think I'm gonna rewatch it after this but um but yeah anyway (laughs) so I'm trying to think now so basically um Benolio tells Maggie, don't worry, I've got an idea because Capricorn has basically said, this is great. Maggie, I'm going to have you read what I wanted to read out of this book. I'm going to have you read my friend out of the book. And Fenolio's like, I kind of think I know who he wants to read out of the book. It, uh, it might be this kind of shadow monster made out of all of the ashes of all of his victims that could possibly bring about the end of the world. 
so maybe we shouldn't read him out. <laughs> it's called the shadow is the thing that Capricorn wants her to read out of the story. Um, and it literally Spooky. would, it's, it's immortal. So it's an immortal monster made up of all of like the tortured spirits of the people Capricorn has murdered basically. That is such a good monster. Like, I love that. It's you know? an excellent monster. Excellent. This is why I want to read Inkheart so bad. I feel like it'd be so crazy, especially yeah. after you read Ink Spell, <laughs> which you haven't read, have you? No. It is even better than Inkheart. And wow. it is like inside of Inkheart, they go mm -hmm. into the book. So the whole what? thing, yeah, it is freaking amazing. Oh and so gosh. you get like way more Inkheart backstory yeah. and like world building. And so I'm like, I want to read the book so bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. I, that sounds good. There's, you get a little bit of the backstory now and you go, Fenolio's kind of dark, like the author, mm -hmm. like he gives these, he gave these villains some pretty dark backstories. Um, to justify I mean because a lot of really bad villains do have really dark backstories but like mm -hmm. Cornelia didn't like she didn't put like a blanket over any of it she was like yeah this happens no. kids and it makes people into monsters well that's not true because you also people also have to take a responsibility for themselves but um right, Fenoya right. is kind of like what did I do uh-oh perhaps I should have done things differently which leads <laughs> us to um Mo and Fenoya had kind of been colluding with this idea where basically we find out that Mo thought it might be possible for Fenolio as the author of Inkheart to rewrite the story, um, to rewrite the end of the story. And then if he were to read it, and if Mo were to read it aloud, it would actually, you know, change things or to read out new things. Yeah. So Fenolio is like, we're going to do it. I'm going to get some paper. And he does kind of manage to trick Boston into getting him some paper. And he writes out like a new kind of end of the story from where, um, where Capricorn is going to have Maggie read out of. Yeah. Um, so, so that's pretty cool. And then meanwhile, it's just not as interesting to me. They're trying to like rescue Maggie or whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but just get back to Maggie. Um, yeah. There's like three different groups happening. Cause like Dustfinger yeah. and Fareed are trying to break in. Mm -hmm. Oh, but They're that is actually kind of the book. relevant. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. Dustfinger is friends with one of the maids, the one Risa. who Risa, the one who, who no doesn't voice. know voice. Mm -hmm. And so he's trying to get her to help him get the book back, but it yeah. backfires and then they get in trouble. Yes. And then Farid meets, runs into Mo and Eleanor and then they become a team. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh, it all, it all weaves together, but there's yeah. definitely, um, there's, everyone's kind of doing something different. Mm -hmm. Like Dustfinger and Farid are doing something different first. Like they capture like Mo and Eleanor trying to get back in and then, and then Dustfinger goes in to try and steal the book, but then he gets caught and they and he gets thrown in jail with Risa, who's already been thrown in the dungeon because Risa got caught helping him. And then Fareed gets convinced by Mo and Eleanor that he should release them and that they should all go on this like rescue mission together. And basically they go set like distraction fires to get in. Yes. Because Fareed's like, you know what I know how to do now? Play with fire. So let's use yeah. that to our advantage. And then in the dungeon, um, we get some scenes between Dustfinger and Risa that are really good. And um, basically around this point, we've been suspecting and now we're very sure that Risa is in fact, Maggie's mother. It is crazy. And it the is. craziest part is that Dustfinger knew. Dustfinger the whole time. He is trying to get with her. It He's is so slutty of him. He is super in love with Risa. It's yeah. to Risa. Teresa, Risa, do you guys get it? I should have gotten guys. It. I was like, oh my God, Teresa. <laughs> like I was I shocked. Mean, it's quite the reveal, you know. It was quite the reveal. And it was excellent. And um, but yeah, so she's like, she's like writing down questions to ask because Dustfinger can read and obviously Risa can. And so she's like writing mm -hmm. down like questions about Mo and about her daughter to ask Dustfinger. And Dustfinger's like kind of answering them, but he kind of like doesn't really want to talk about them because he's like, I'm in <laughs> love with you though, Risa, but I'm in love with you. It's like, I'm actively betraying your husband. Like, can we not talk about him, please? Can we please don't talk about him. <laughs> and it's hard because he like, Dustfinger does like Mo. Like if it weren't for Risa yeah. and this whole weirdness with him being read out of the book and wants Motorina back in, like they'd be butts. Like they are kind of friends. They but... do get along sort of, like they understand yeah. each other, you know? Yeah, they do. Um, so anyway, so all that's going on. And well, um, also all of this gets way worse when you read the second book and find out Dustfinger is married. He is Dustfinger. married. Dustfinger. He has, he has two children. Dustfinger. <laughs> 
Goldfinger, <laughs> what are you doing going after Risa? Is that not insane? That is so upsetting because like, <laughs> If it weren't for the whole him being in love with Risa thing, then him wanting to get back to Inkheart so uh, badly would be even more sweet. But it is bad. Like he is, he Cornelia, is this is a children's book. Cornelia. Cornelia did that. And then they're oh, like, oh my God, once you meet Roxanne, that's his Dustfinger's wife. Like it uh -huh. gets so crazy in book two. You will oh not believe it. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can. I'm stressed out. I'm stressed out hearing it. I'm very disappointed in Dustfinger in you. He's like kind Dustfinger. of bad. Like I love him so much, but he is so He's complex. Kind of bad. He does he very is. bad things and very good things and he cannot yes. make up his mind. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's why yeah, I, I mean, I, he's, I think he's just supposed to be a very real person, but I would yeah. still, I would still like to take my person a little less flawed. May I have him a little, <laughs> he's a little underdone. I would like him a little more well he done is. perhaps. He, he has a lot of, he has a big arc throughout yeah. the series. So, well, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear it because yeah. we start out in a pretty low place and apparently in book two, we get even lower. So, uh, yeah, it gets crazy. I'll just uh, tell you that. Anyway. So, um, basically Capricorn's mother who gets treated basically like one of the servants and she's kind of, she's kind of the worst and kind of like a, a witch and weird and stuff. And so anyway, she like makes yeah. Maggie put on this, like white dress and they're going to basically have this big like celebratory like reading thing where she's going to stand up on this podium in these like ancient ruins or something and like read from the book she's going to read out the shadow for Capricorn so Capricorn can take over the world and so that's happening Fenolio has been brought out as a prisoner to watch all of this and then in the dungeon they're going to have the shadow execute um dust finger and Risa and is Mo captured? Where's Mo and Farid at this point? Uh, well, Dustfinger escapes because Maggie goes to like talk That's to right. Dustfinger and Risa because yes. she suspects Risa's her mom. Yes. And then Dustfinger betrays him again because yep. he is like, listen, me and Risa need to go, but Maggie, you can't go because you they'll go. see you immediately. Yeah. But you'll be fine. Don't worry. And they're not going to kill you. And Risa's yeah. like, I'm not leaving Maggie Without now. Yeah. And so Dustfinger's like, okay, bye. And he just yeah, so leaves. Dustfinger leaves. And so, yeah. So Risa's going to be executed. And so Mo and escapes. Farid are doing yeah. the fire yeah. they're doing the fire they're doing like distractions and kind of spreading out capricorn's men and all that uh -huh. but so basically um oh and then eleanor gets captured sorry oh yes and eleanor's captured and so, so it's like eleanor and risa and yeah. risa yeah and they're going to be eaten by the shadow along with you know Fenolio probably and everyone else in the world <laughs> yeah. and so you know no big deal uh so she's got these pages that Fenolio has rewritten the end of Inkheart on like the stuff about the shadow and so she's hidden them in her sleeve and so she has this like signal, I forget what it is with, um, with Fenolio. And so he kind of distracts them for a second and she whips out the papers and puts it in the book. And so no one can see it. And then basically she starts to read out of the book and we are obviously approaching the climax. And I remember in the movie being like this being really intense. Um, I remember specific ways that the actress who plays Maggie says the lines. Like while I was uh -huh. reading it, I was like, oh, I remember how she says it in the movie. It's so good. It's anyway. so good. The way that Cornelia describes Mo and Maggie reading is very mm -hmm. intense. Like it's mm -hmm. very potent. It makes you think, wow, you could read someone out of a book. Like if anyone could, you could. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so she's reading about the shadow and she's reading. So as she's reading about the shadow, the shadow is like coming into being in front of them, like this big shadowy thing. Um, and it's, you know, like the wind picks up and everything's crazy. And she's reading about how the shadow is like made from all of the ashes and the trapped, tortured souls or whatever of Capricorn's victims. But then it basically says the weight of all of those souls turned against Capricorn and crushed him and killed Capricorn basically. And that actually happened. So they're like, stop yeah! her, but it's too late. And so the shadow kills Capricorn. And then like all the souls are, you know, I guess sent to rest now. And so the shadow kind of just, just kind of disappears. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, and the things are basically all turned to right. Like all of the creatures that were killed and had become the shadow are like returned, but they're all like just out and about. So there's like a bunch of fairies and like goblins and stuff like that. Just kind of like roaming around this little town now. Um, Mo is there um, because she almost can't finish reading. Oh, that's right. Maggie is about to read the line in the book that Fenolio has written about how the shadow kills Capricorn, but she can't quite do it, which is, you know, I'm glad that Cornelia was like, how about we don't have 12 year olds kill people? So instead, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Mo jumps in. Mo is there now. They, he and Farid have managed to get past Capricorn's men and they're there. And he reads the last couple lines about how the shadow kills Capricorn. And so 
Hooray. That's done. Um, Risa Yay. still can't speak, but Risa and Mo and Maggie are all reunited. The happy family. They go to live with Yay. Eleanor. Some of the fairies also go with to live at her place, which is kind of funny. Um, and that's Dustfinger goes off to do his own kind of bitter thing. And that's, that's pretty much Inkheart. <laughs> yeah. And Fareed goes with him and that's yeah. it. Yep. Yay. Oh, and Maggie's going to start writing. Oh yes. That's Maggie decides that she's thing. going to be a writer, which I love for her. I love that, that arc Yay. for her. Me yeah. too. Love this for you, girl. Love uh, I love her. She's so cute. <laughs> she <laughs> is. I wanted to be her best friend when I was like also 12 reading it. I, I would like, have been... Is- I think this would have changed the course of the way that I think and feel about life if I had read this as a young child. <laughs> like it's that intense. It's, I would have it been is. obsessed with it. Like it would have formed me oh. in like very like permanent ways if I'd read it as a child. It was my entire personality. Like I reread Ink Spell four times. Yeah. And it's like 680 pages or something. And I reread this one a couple of times also. Yeah. And I did not reread the third one because the third one and I have beef, but we'll get to that later, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I have questions uh, for Cornelia, but yeah, I think you, you should know, write her whatever. letter. I think you'd be like, I need, I really need should. answers actually. I don't know if I'd be able to be objective though. I think I need to reread it now that I'm older and just see yeah. if I still feel the same way. I yeah. think I will, but I think anyway. that's a, I think that's a good idea. Well, anyways, what was your favorite and least favorite parts? Um, <laughs> No, I love all of it. Uh, I think my favorite part, I kind of, this is like kind of lame, I guess, because it's not anything exciting, but I kind of love the part where all of the gang is like escaping um, Capricorn's village and then they go to hang out in like that cute little Italian like Uh village. I think it's so cute because I love like the gang being together because they, the thing I love about it is that none of the main characters really make sense together, except for like Mo and Maggie who are related, but like, yeah, they're all very like weird. Like the fact that Farid is here, like he's just yeah. some random guy they met a day ago who was from a book. Dustfinger yeah. definitely doesn't fit in and he doesn't want to. And like, yeah. he hates Eleanor and like everything is so weird. And like, they're all, I don't know. It's so funny. And then they meet Fenolia. I love like that whole sequence of them, like escaping and like, getting Basta and flat nose or whatever and then yeah. going into the village because I think it's funny to see them all thicker and stuff yeah it is and good my least favorite part I don't know I I don't know because I really like all of it <laughs> I don't know I get a little bit mad at Dustfinger for his like Risa oh. ob- obsession but yeah but that's also because I I know what happens next. So I'm like, mm-hmm. you son of a bitch. Like, and because it's frustrating to watch him. Cause like every time you get dust finger, cause I guess we should mention like the book goes like different perspectives. It's all like mm-hmm. third person limited, but depending yeah. on the yeah. chapter, like it'll be a different character. Mm-hmm. So like every time you get like a dust finger chapter, you find out another thing that he's done that makes you mad. Like you're like, yes. oh, you're really betraying them again. Yep. But then you also are like, oh, I can't seem mad at you. Like I love you. But um <laughs> that's what makes- you say. <laughs> yeah, that's me. But he makes me so mad when he because he knows Risa is Mo's wife and he refuses to tell either of them. He has been hanging out with Mo this whole time and didn't tell him that his wife this is alive. This is so upsetting. Like, Mo has been there for him. Mo has tried to help, okay? I know. Like, Mo is the closest thing he has to a friend. And Look, he's has, like- Mo has never made a mistake. No. Like, no. never. And Dustin literally has a line where he says something like, oh yeah, well, he took my whole world from me. I can take his wife. And I'm like, the frustrating thing is I think he could have if she wasn't hung up on Mo, like, because they kind of got along really well and they were friends. Yeah, they definitely, they were definitely He has game, like, I do believe (laughs) that finger is hot, like, in my, like, okay, I'm glad you agree, like, they don't specifically say it. Yeah, but you know he is, though. He has, like, scars on his face, like, Mm -hmm. he's totally hot. You know he's hot, yeah. No, I, I never questioned for a second that Dustfinger is extremely attractive. I'm like, this is just objective fact. We can all just accept it. Oh my God, I love you so much. You're on the same page. Like, I didn't even have to say it. Of course, of course. Um, it's just the way it is, man. Um, oh yeah, totally. But I still get mad at him when he 
Yeah. He does that. I think favorite part, I really like the climax where they're reading the shadow out, like Maggie and Mo together. I think that it's just really powerful and really cool. Um, least favorite part, I don't know. I mean, I was really crushed for Eleanor when all of her books were burned. It was just so needless. Oh, there was literally no purpose to it. They would I think just I want to change her. mine. That one's yeah. really sad. Yeah. It is really sad. I mean, I, I definitely don't approve of Dustfingers being in love with <laughs> Risa, most wife, and uh, not really. I mean, even like secretly being in love with someone is very different than harboring the fact from your friend that his long forgotten, not forgotten, but long lost wife is in fact yeah. here. And he loves her so much, but he won't even tell her that his that her daughter and husband are like he knows them and they're nearby. Yeah. Yeah. That is messed up. It is messed up. It's very messed up. Uh, and so, he's married. I cannot stress enough. He is married with two kids. See, that would have been my least favorite part <laughs> if it happened in this book. I'm so, Although, Finger, I'm so disappointed. His marriage is turbulent. Like, I can't. I, that's why I was like, why is this even in a kid's book? Like, this is so oh funny. God. I'm having to deal with, like, the marriage troubles of, like, a 40-year-old man. And I'm, like, <laughs> 11 years old. Like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Like, what, 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 what business of it was my, like, what business was it of mine? That's insane. This was, I feel and like, I very, totally, yeah, anyway. This is very obviously, like, a European book. I feel like European family oh. and relationships are very different than American. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem that way, but like, I'm just saying like my Italian family and their marriages, not just the old ones, the young ones are very different. The level of, of chaos in those relationships that I would, I consider chaos is pretty normal for them, or at least like not unheard of. So like the idea that he would be in love with another woman and have this turbulent marriage, I feel like at least in Italy, Oh, to my experience is not a shock so maybe <laughs> Pinolio was like yeah what who cares you know what about <laughs> sure. it he's like and this is just life and so yeah. I don't know if yeah. maybe that's part of it <laughs> I'm probably Ooh. offending the Europeans but listen in my experience this has been true I also had that thought I was like I think the things that are scandalous to me about this book are actually just normal in European like culture yeah, not that all exactly. Europeans have the same culture but like no. generally over there because yeah. I was like a lot of it has to do with like sex or like I don't know adult things that I would think yeah like I don't know over here we're pretty okay with violence generally <laughs> like we're yeah. like yeah kids can handle violence but anytime sex is involved we're like oh no 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 but I feel like over there they don't care as much so no. like the fact that they were parts of this book where they're like oh yeah the Capricorn's enslaved handmaidens just like if they can get it on with some of the men like that's mm -hmm. fine yeah like they just talk about that in the book and I'm like this is a kid's book like this is a what are we doing book. how are we talking yeah. about this or like oh yeah Dustfinger can cheat on his wife it's fine and I'm like what <laughs> this is no, crazy no I think yeah I think not saying that Europeans cheat on their wives all the time I'm just no. saying that like they're willing to talk about it maybe more than yes, we would in a kid's book a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I agree. I have a lot of thoughts about that, but I'm just not an impartial observer. <laughs> to yeah. it. But I, I do, I do agree at the very least. I think they're a lot more open about that concept. I yeah. mean, it's not like infidelity is any more common like there than it is here, but they're definitely more open about it there than we are here because people right. hide it here over there. Sometimes they're like, yeah. And what about it? And you're like, well, it's not good. And they're like, it's just life. And you're like, but it's not good. <laughs> Like it's are they wrong though? I guess it just does happen. I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's yeah. interesting the different cultural because once yes. you recognize that it's a translated book, I feel like a lot mm -hmm. of it makes more sense. I'm like, oh, yes. she's German. Germans yeah. are play fast and loose with sex. Like they just get it. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but this that's is an true. assumption that we're making. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't the know Germans that many gonna, Germans. They're gonna come for me. Well, I'm just saying, like, based on my four years of <laughs> German German. <laughs> That's we so would funny. watch commercials sometimes where I'd be like, this uh -huh. is a commercial for yogurt. And it would be like, oh, <gasps> naked woman. Like they're just doing Germany. You know what I mean? Like it's just different. Germany, I'm scandalized. I just <laughs> as an American, I'm scandalized. <laughs> as an American, I am saying maybe you need to cover that up. Yeah. If the thing is in America, we we do all the same things, but we just cover it up. That's our thing. We put yeah. like that, like a thin sheer nighty on our naked people in commercials. <laughs> so uh, it looks as if they're not as naked as they are, but we all can see it's pretty much the same. 
Yeah, it's the same. You know, I've heard this before about like, because I'm obviously American, so I can't say as like an objective <laughs> person, but American. I have heard, I'm obviously American. Uh, I kind of am, but I have heard <laughs> that like, I don't know. It seems to me that sometimes people from different countries get, or like it's a, a distinctly American thing to kind of like do the, yep, I'm fine kind of thing. And like everyone's kind of pretending to be happy all the time. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe that's the same thing. We just like, like to cover everything up a little bit and yeah. be like, nope, everything's great. Yeah. I think Brits I think do kind of too. Cause that, that stiff upper lip thing, I think it's more of a Brit thing. And I think Americans do it too, but yeah, I mean, definitely for sure in Italy. And I won't take this one back in Italy. If someone's having an issue, I don't think there's that much effort to hide it. I feel like they're like, <laughs> yeah, I'm angry today. I am. That's the way it so is. What? They're not going to hide it. Yeah. I'm having a bad, I'm upset today. Or yeah, I'm happy. Like there's no, I don't really think that in Italian yeah. culture specifically, they're thought of as a very passionate people. I have beef with just describing all things emotional as passionate. I just have a big beef with that word, but I will say that it is true. <laughs> and that's a big part of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, it's just cultural differences. It's just cultural. That's interesting. Yeah. But uh, what was your favorite, um, least favorite character? Okay, this is easy. Uh, favorite, favorite character, Dustfinger. Least favorite character, Dustfinger. <laughs> Dustfinger. No. Uh, probably Capricorn. Mm -hmm. I think just because I want, and just grant me this one little rant real quick. It's not really a rant. I just want to express my opinion. But it. I feel like he. This is my one thing. I think Capricorn could have been a scarier villain. Like he is scary for sure because he's kind of like doesn't care at all. And he's very like, you know, obviously a yeah. psychopath. But yeah. um, in the second book, we get introduced to a different villain who is like worse than Capricorn. He's like the king of the ink world. Anyway, worse than Capricorn. He's worse. His name is, he's called the Adderhead and he is scary as hell. He is like so scary. He makes Capricorn look like nothing, which like come. So for me, when I first read, I read Ink Spell first. So I was like, oh, oh yeah. this guy's scary. And then I read Ink Heart and I was like, who is this Who's clown? This like <laughs> literally, I was like, he's doing nothing. Like this is so stupid. Oh my so god. So for me, I'm almost like I feel like he could have been worse, or like I don't know. I feel like also he doesn't get a lot of character development. Not that I want him to not be evil, but like I just kind of yeah. think he's a little two dimensional. Yeah. But um, that's okay. I mean, we get other bad guys. Like Basta yeah. has a little bit more going to him. Yeah, but, Basta. Um, yeah, he does. He's more of like the face that you see for Capricorn's evil. I yes, think most is. of the time. Yeah. So I guess probably Capricorn, not because I think, I think I like that he's a very, very evil villain. I love it uh -huh. when there's an evil villain, you know, that's yeah. the best. I just yeah. kind of think he could have been a little bit more fleshed out. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, I think my least favorite character is Basta runner up Capricorn, just because we see more of Basta being a dick and we mm -hmm. hear more about Basta's story. Like we just get to know him more as a person. So it's more personal to me when he acts yeah. awful. And then a uh, favorite character is Mo. I think. I just think he's a great father. He's he a great is. father. And I love that he was like the first one with this like reading talent. I just think he's very complex. Um, he's a yeah. great guy. Like he's, he's a, a good guy. character. Yeah. I totally agree. I love Mo. And yeah. then if we read, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and put the second one on the next reading list. Is that okay? That's fine with me. It's my favorite book of all time. Like I have. And yeah. To. And I mean, Ink Spell is the one that got you into this. It again. is. Well, you didn't start with Ink Heart. So. No, I didn't. And yeah. I just wanted to say Mo has quite the journey in Ink Spell. Like there is a lot going on with your boy. So yay. Okay. Sweet. So we'll do that. Some next crazy season. stuff happening. Cool. Uh, let's see what else. Um, what did we learn from this book? Um, we learned... <laughs> Be careful know. reading out loud. <laughs> you yeah, never true. know. I used to read out loud and just like see if I had it. Like I'd be like, can I do mm -hmm. it? Like in my room I'm still, myself. I mean, I'm a grown up, but when I read books about stuff like this, I'm like, I'm going to try it out loud now. Like I still yeah. will. I'm like, you never know. Okay. It could be latent. <laughs> yeah. I could like, you know, you're like YA journey that happens when you're supposed to be like 12 or 16. It's yeah. always one of those. You're like, yeah. maybe it just will hit me when I'm 25. You never know. Yeah. I'm a late bloomer. So yeah. what? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> you're, you're going to finally find your mermaid till but grows in when you're 25 is what happens. 100%. It's gonna, or maybe when I turn 30 or 40, I mean, it's <laughs> never too late. 
Okay. I would so read a book about a 40 year old discovering they have magic powers, like, or a mermaid tail. I would read that. Would that would be amazing. Where is, I demand it. Authors out there, adult authors, I'm demanding it. I would do it, but I've never written <laughs> adult fiction very well. So please, somebody <laughs> we'll do see. it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Don't let's see. Be careful reading out loud. Um, yeah, it's uh, never too late to develop superpowers. So true. Um, so true. So uh, true. Don't trust don't. the hot thief. Like you can think he's hot, but do not trust him. Okay. He is a trickster. He will betray you. He I know has he's an hot. established pattern of behavior. And yes, he's very sexy. We all like the scars. Okay. Uh, but you yes, cannot can rely on him. fire. Yes. Okay. We get I know. It. He sounds like the perfect man. <laughs> he can <laughs> juggle fire. It's what okay. every little girl dreams of. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, do not trust that bitch. Um, uh uh-uh, uh uh uh. What else? Uh, he's gonna he's gonna betray you. He's gonna marry you, and then he's gonna fall in love with someone else's wife. Oh, uh, God. You know, I said you you think he's attractive. Roxanne thought so too. So I'm just gonna put that <laughs> out there. I can't believe we're having ink spell discourse on the pod. I'm so happy. Um. <laughs> God. I'm oh so glad God. You're happy. Yeah, I'm really like on cloud nine right now. Um, <laughs> rereading this book was so fun for me because I haven't read it in like a long uh-huh. time, but I read it a lot when I was younger, you know, mm-hmm. and it, I was like, oh, I really hope it holds up. Like this was my everything and yeah. it totally did. Like, I'm so happy anyway, but, yeah. um, what else did we learn? We learned, I feel like there are a lot of booky lessons, like lots of booky lessons. Yeah. And no. every chapter starts out with a quote from a different book, which is pretty cool. That's right. Yeah. Yes. I love that. Yeah. It's good. I don't know. We learned that like books can a... change the world, but that's how we, we all knew that. That's why we're here. <laughs> yeah. Come on. We all knew that old news. <laughs> old news you guys we learned that scholastic that there is in fact a market for adult scholastic book fairs <laughs> i would spend a fortune at an adult scholastic book fair yeah you saw a how fortune. much money i spent at that bookstore and that's just like if it had been a scholastic book fair can you even <laughs> imagine how much money i would have blown yeah the funny thing is now that i'm thinking about it i guess a scholastic adult scholastic book fair is just like going to barnes and noble but I feel like there's something it's like an else air about of festivity it. about yeah, it. Yeah, it's like an event, you know. Yeah. It was like, oh, this classic book fair is here, you know. Yeah, I want to be able to walk bring. around with a glass of wine in one hand, the roaming scholastic book fair. <laughs> That's what I, I want. <laughs> yes, I feel like it's the closest we will get to like, oh, the the carnivals in town were like 1890, you know. Yes, or something. exactly, exactly. It's it was closest. like that. It yeah. does feel like that. I think we need to bring it back. I want an outdoor book market where we can walk around with wine Mm -hmm. or in the fall mugs of spiked cider. I think that sounds fantastic. I think it definitely needs to be in the fall. Yeah, I think for sure. That's the, it's the reader season is the fall. It is cozy season. Cozy season. I dare you to find a bookworm who likes summer better than fall. I'm actually curious. No. I mean, I love summer, but fall is where it's at. Like, yes, it is. What happened? (laughs) What happened happened is it got to 108 degrees for a whole week, and I'm over it forever now. What happened is that I have a farm now, and it is yeah. You have to be outside now. No pool, no pool, no lake nearby. Nowhere to cool off. You guys should really make a pool. That'd be so cool. I know. I want to. I really want to put a pool on the back acre because summer would be a whole 60% more enjoyable if I could go jump in the pool. Absolutely. Like that would make the whole summer. Yes, it would. So that's, it's, it's in the works. It's in the planning process, but we also have to get our goats and our donkey and our bees first and our fish tank. Oh, right. And then fish. Yes. And then we can do mermaid lagoon. And then Mermaid Lagoon. But yeah, it is. It will be Mermaid Lagoon. Oh my God, I can make a little sign for it that says Mermaid Lagoon. I can commission one from someone who can actually do artwork. Uh, Of course you can. It'll have a little sign. You can have like um, 
I don't know. What would you have in your mermaid lagoon? Like around it. I feel like Rock you need some maybe? kind of, I don't know. yeah, like some pebbles, some yeah. cool shells. Yes. You could have. Um, People do this thing where they make it look kind of like marshy on the edges of their like yeah. pools, which I really love, but I'm afraid snakes might go into it. But maybe oh, if it's- Oh, that's right. And if it's a chlorine pool, then I can't do that because it'll kill the plants. And a saltwater pool I could do, but what if snakes, what if we get snakes who want to swim in the saltwater? I think yeah. about this a lot. Like, this is a very active problem in my <laughs> life, even though I'm nowhere near being well, able to afford it. <laughs> even if you did a chlorine pool, you could put like little lily pads in there and stuff, like fake yeah. ones, and they could float Aww, around and it could cute. look like Mermaid Lagoon from Peter Pan. Yes. And you could have like, um, oh my God, now I'm just losing my mind. I'm going to like write out all the things I want for your Mermaid Lagoon and send them to you just to give okay, you ideas. Perfect. That sounds okay. fantastic. I am I'm so excited for Mermaid Lagoon. I I am gonna be mad at summer until I get Mermaid Lagoon, just in the to the universe, mm-hmm. just so everybody knows. But um as you're right. Yeah. Anyways, do we have uh favorite quotes from this book? Oh right. This book has a lot of good quotes because I feel like Cornelia is really good at writing. <laughs> um <laughs> yes I agree <laughs> like just her descriptions of things are very elevated like um it's like for kids but it never to me feels like oh this is patronizing in any way <laughs> like yeah all of it is very much like oh yeah kids can read this and understand it and handle it like it's not yeah exactly. I, I love that about her um okay you might have picked this one I don't know because I feel like it's kind of a popular one but I like it um so I'm gonna read it Yeah. This one, this quote says only in books, could you find pity, comfort, happiness, and love books loved anyone who opened them. They gave you security and friendship and didn't ask anything in return. They never went away. Never. Not even when you treated them badly, love, truth, beauty, wisdom, and consolation against death. Very good. So good. I have three. (laughs) Okay. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. For very different reasons. So, um, the first one I just really, really like, cause I like a lot of different quotes that have to do with fear. I probably talked about it before. I just think it's a really good one. This is one of Mo's quotes. He says, because fear kills everything, your mind, your heart, your imagination. I think it's just true. I think like a lot of times we look at history and we go, how is it possible that this, a horrible thing happened and no one stopped it. And I'm like, because people were afraid. And when you get afraid, like it does kill everything. It kills your problem solving ability. It kills your spirit. Like it kills everything. So I just thought that was really potent. This one is like extremely personal to just me. Like I just really related to it and it's not (laughs) even how it doesn't really have to do with books specifically. It just says the sea always filled her with longing though for what she was never sure. Yeah. I feel that way. I've always felt that way when I look at the ocean. I'm like, it's this intense longing, and I don't know what it is. So in your Moana just, era. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, I remember that line because I was yeah. like, oh, that's a good one. It is a good one. And then this other one, I just remember thinking, this is what I'm going to tell children. This is like really early in the book. Mo says this to, to Maggie. Um, he has basically, since she was little, told her that books have to be heavy because the whole world's inside of them. Yes. And I thought that's so good. I'm going to tell my children that it's so good. That's a good but one. Yeah. So Mo is such a good three. dad. Like he that's is really I'm killing saying. it. He really is a good dad. I don't think Mo has ever made it. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of perfect. <laughs> He's kind of perfect. He kind of doesn't make mistakes. I mean, he did accidentally read his wife into a book, but that was like a pure accident. Like it was an accident. That. Yeah. Yeah. He did not mean to do it. And then he feels like so bad, like when he accidentally reads Farid into our world. Into the world. Stuff. Like, yeah. He feels he, awful. And of course he feels like he is so nice to Dustfinger, honestly, for someone who keeps betraying him and bothering him for 10 he years. Is, yeah. Like everyone gives him way too much of a break because he's people keep going uh well I guess we'll save him or like oh yeah I don't want Dustfinger to die and I'm like why not he betrayed you four times already like yeah he's caused a crazy. lot of the conflict in this plot so but Mo's like I feel so bad for him and I'm yeah. like no like Mo I know so but nice. <laughs> come on dude Mo he's trying so to get sweet. with your wife yeah but he doesn't Mo know that so nice yeah I know. well now um, oh my else? god when he what? found the picture in Dustinger's bag I like lost my mind when Farina oh, was like oh I think he's in love with him I would love with her I was like yeah. ah. I know Haley I know Haley and I just watched the Elvis film Love Me Tender which was his mm-hmm. first film have you ever seen it no it 
was crazy and it had a similar plot where you're like oh my god it's like a crazy love triangle it oh was my so gosh bonkers that insane. sounds stressful it was so stressful we were both like freaking out the whole time oh my god no, anyway it was you. really good he was good in it <laughs> he was good in it is he that was hitting you the way you said it, is the whiskey hitting you at all that's good in it uh a little bit but no honestly I mean it he was very good oh I know I believe that you mean it whiskey or no whiskey <laughs> um <laughs> never question that um let's see is that everything we would do for oh pinkies up we got a pinkies up it pinkies up five 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 one two three four five for you too yes three four five Five. Awesome. Look at us go. We really my pinky is so weak. I couldn't get to the fifth one. <laughs> well, I'm to like wiggle see, my pinky. Oh, right this is Three, tough. This four. is the, that pretentious book club workout regimen. Just pinkies up. Yeah, constantly. just pinkies up. It's just you know, three times a day. Just stop what you're doing and pinkies up. <laughs> just one pinky. <laughs> uh, we guys. guarantee that in, a, in six months of, of three times a day, your pinky will be a little stronger than it was when you started. <laughs> Is that measurable? No, don't no. ask us again. <laughs> <laughs> that is the official TPPC workout regimen and we are not changing it. We will not negotiate. You cannot get your money back. There are no guaranteed results. We are not responsible for any injuries. to pinky. We are not. <laughs> it's true. We're not you guys. So do not sue us. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, you guys. Not Never again. God. We can't not do again. it again. Never again. We have it or have we? <laughs> oh, I didn't tell you, but <laughs> just like I didn't think it was important. Is that uh Thomas Hardy came back from the dead to see us? He's like, or... guys, you you totally slandered me. It was not supposed to be about cousin lovers, okay? You made that way bigger of a deal than it was, okay? We're like, uh Thomas, you were the one who started it, okay? <laughs> you started the cousin lovers thing. Thomas. Oh my god. There is an Elvis film called Kissing Cousins, and I screamed when I saw the title of it because I got so upset. I was like, Have you watched God, it? No, I haven't watched you it have yet. To. But it turns out it's not about cousins kissing each other, it's about Elvis playing two cousins who are both trying to kiss different people. That is <laughs> so, that took me really on a journey right there. <laughs> just that little synopsis. Well, isn't that such a relief though? It's like, oh, it is God. actually a massive relief, yeah. Can you imagine? Hey, baby, I know we're cousins, but uh, let's get it on. You know? Let's get it that, on. <laughs> Thomas Hardy would approve. You know what I mean? He would. Thomas Hardy would. He's like, I just don't see a problem. <laughs> Thomas is like, what's a big deal? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's making a really big deal about this. <laughs> honestly like I'm seriously I that's not even my biggest beef like we are fine with that Thomas just why did you have to make the children kill each other it was awful <laughs> Thomas you I really thought that the deal breaker was going to be the cousin lovers and then and then you pulled out like the last third of that book and it was suddenly like the cousin lovers are far from the biggest problem in this book God, only Thomas could do a bait and switch on us like that you know only Thomas could yeah. get me to actually root for the cousin lovers yeah seriously Insane. So, yeah if you guys are are wondering what uh this what we're just talking about you should go listen to our episode on Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy <laughs> it was a whirlwind of an experience yeah. spoiler alert uh, for all if of you may think right now that you're against cousin lovers but you go listen you go listen to that episode to read that book and I guarantee you you're gonna be less against it than you thought you were when you see what the end option of the book is you're gonna see how the way the book ends and you're gonna go maybe cousin lovers aren't that bad after all <laughs> oh god or maybe it was all just karma for the cousin loving you know this was the result natural result of cousin love maybe this is what happens <laughs> I don't know. This is a warning. Thomas was trying to warn society against cousin love. That's he was why like, he's going to come happens? back and sue us. He's going to be like, this is, you're taking the wrong thing out of what I said. I'm trying to teach people not to marry their cousins. He's like, you're you over here saying idiot. <laughs> it was very clear. <laughs> I'm never going to really know what he was trying to say about this book. We've talked about it so many no. times. We're never going to really understand. And will um, I ever get it out of my head? No. No. Thomas, you ruined my life. I hope you... <laughs> I hope you know that. <laughs> He's like, I know. Oh, I'm, I know. But that I ruined it as much as uh, my character, as Jude's life was ruined. Oh, God. Yeah. Has, nobody's life has ever been worse than Jude. 
Honestly, it's it's kind of like Job from the Bible where it's kind of like, yeah, you're suffering, but have you ever suffered like Job has? And then it's like, it is, Jude is Job. You're like, no one's life has ever been as shitty as Jude's. <laughs> you can't really complain about anything uh, when you think about Jude. Thank God I'm not Jude, you know? Thank God, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so next week, we're going to read one of my all-time favorites, The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. Yeah! So good. What a oh, week. Back Oscar. to back favorite books. That, like, yes. for, I love this for us. We've got a lot of favorites in this season, which is going well for us. Um, so the importance of being earnest is actually a play. It's a straight play, which is ironic when you consider it's written by Oscar Wilde. <laughs> you get my joke. Get it, it, guys? Because he's I gay. Made a gay joke because Oscar <laughs> Wilde is famously gay. He made a gay joke on the podcast, you guys. <laughs> <sighs> It's Oscar funny. would approve. Come Oscar on, would, guys. Oscar would fully approve. If anyone is offended right now, I do need you to know that that was in honor of Oscar. He would have we, so appreciated that joke. We do nothing but honor and support Oscar Wilde on this. Oh, podcast. we! How could we not? Oscar Wilde is—he is—he is close to a deity. I mean, we are number one world, in, We are Oscar Wilde. I. I know he's not interested in me, but I've always been in love with him. I've been like, <laughs> I don't even care that you don't have feelings for me and never would, Oscar. I'm still, I am devoted to you, Oscar. I've always been. He would, he would be so kind to you though. I just feel like this is yes. so, we need to say this. I, I feel like he would accept so that. Much. I feel like he would accept he my love for him. He has a kind heart. Yes. Oh, he totally would. He would be like, yeah. as you should, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> confidence, he, the confidence. He, the audacity, the audacious confidence of that beautiful, beautiful man is uh, unbelievable. Never have anyone like him again, you know, no. once in a we, lifetime. The world, he, once in a, in a existent, there will never yeah. be anyone else as amazing as Oscar Wilde. Anyway, so we'll fangirl, yeah. I'm sure more. Have we freaked about- out enough about Oscar Wilde? Today? Yeah. Like, can you guys tell we kind of like Oscar Wilde? He's all we right, love him. you know, we love him. Uh, so we're going to read The Importance of Being Earnest. It's pretty short. Uh, you guys could also go watch it. There's a lot of good um, versions of it. If, but if you guys ever get a chance to see like the stage play, like see it on stage, it is so good. I've seen it multiple times. I've loved it every single time. It is it's so funny. It is so, so hysterically funny. So I'm excited because this is like a, as comedy as comedy gets. Um, mm-hmm. so that'll be a really good time. Um, it's not a book rec because it's my book rec. So I guess it's mine. It's my Yay! book rec for the pod, which I mean, has previously just been, most of them have been my book recs and a few listener recs here and there. So anyways, um, we'll do that next week. If you guys want to keep with us, keep up with us until then you can, we are on social media. We are that pretentious book club on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. If you guys have, um, book, uh, episode suggestions you want us to do maybe next season, you can email us at contact at story That's our production company. Uh, or you can message us on social media. You can also go to story If you want to check out some of our merch, we have some really cool merch out right now. And my sister Madison, our graphic designer is working on some really cool, like Shakespeare merch. So if you guys are a short person, it's specifically geared to short people, this like little joke shirt that she's making. So it'll be cute. But even if you're tall, there's still plenty of stuff for you on our store. So it's go check fine. it out. It's fine. Your Listen, inner I'm Hermia. short, Spoons is tall. <laughs> so like we really have, we've encapsulated everyone here. Okay? Solidarity, you know. Everyone, we welcome people of every height, okay? We do. <laughs> we do. We definitely don't discriminate. Um, no, no, no. So go check that out if you guys want to support the pod or just have some really cool bookish merch. And then um, if you guys also want to support us in a different way, you guys can go to Patreon at StorySirenStudio.com or Story Science Studio and um, our videos and stuff are up there. So if you guys ever want to see videos or bonus episodes, all that good stuff is there for you guys to check out. And I think that's everything that we've got. If you guys enjoyed the episode and you don't mind leaving us a review below, that would be fantastic and spread the word to your friends and we'll keep growing the club. It has been growing per usual, which is just, it's great. I did not think many, many moons ago when we began this, that we would have so many listeners. It's so nice. I honestly, it's crazy. It is. It's amazing. It's delightful. So thank you guys for being with us and we are excited to do more episodes with you guys and we'll see you next week. And until then, keep your teacups full. Your pinkies high. And your book club. Pretentious. (laughs) Goodbye. Bye. That was good. I, 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 I,